In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the three measures of center that we will use in this course, the mean, the median, and the mode. These three measures are computed exactly the same way you learned to compute them back in elementary school. For the mean, you're going to add up all the values and divide by the number of values that you have. The median is the value in the center of the data set when the data set is in order, and the mode is the value that occurs most often. Let's look at an example. Let's say I have these six numbers. To find the mean, I add them together and I divide by the number six and find that the mean, or the average, is nine. But what does that mean exactly? What is an average? The average, or the mean, is really the place where the data set balances. So imagine a number line. Imagine every number on the line gets a weight. And if I want to make this a teeter-totter, I want to find the place where that will balance. That's the mean. In the book, you will notice two different formulas for the mean. One for the sample mean and one for the population mean. Now, it's important for us to have different symbols for these two things because later on in the course, we're going to want to compare the sample mean to the population mean. So the sample mean is marked with an X with a bar on the top, we call that X bar, and the population mean is marked with the Greek letter mu. But for both of these formulas, it tells us to do just what we've already discussed. We add up all the values and then divide by the count of the values. So let's look a little bit more closely at the notation. In the numerator of both fractions, you will see a capital letter sigma. It looks a little bit like an E, but that is the capital letter S in Greek. It stands for sum. And this is a symbol that is common to all of math, not just statistics. So when we see the capital sigma and X, that means to add together all the values. The capital letter N is the number of values in the population, and lowercase n is the number in the sample. That letter mu, again, is a lowercase Greek letter equivalent to the letter M for mean, and that is the symbol we use for the population mean. X bar, the X with the line over it, is the symbol for the sample mean. So here are the formulas again, and you can see in both cases, we're adding together all the values. And for the sample mean, we divide by the number of things in the sample. And for the population mean, we divide by the number of things in the population. To find the median, the first thing I do is sort the values from smallest to largest. In this example, because I have six values, there are two numbers in the center, seven and nine, so the median is going to be exactly between those two numbers. So I can take the average of seven and nine, so in this example, my median is eight. The mode is the value that occurs most often, and none of the values occur more than once in this data set, so there's no mode. But that's okay, we don't have to have a mode. In fact, sometimes we'll have more than one mode. We might have two or three or four even, and that's okay too. So let's see what happens if we add another number to our data set. I'm going to now have seven numbers, and I've added in the number 121, which is quite a ways away from all the other numbers in the data set, and let's see what happens to the mean and the median. If we add these seven numbers together and divide by seven, we see that the mean now equals 25. And now that we have seven numbers in the data set, we have one number exactly in the center, and that's nine, so our median is nine. So what just happened? I added one more number, and the mean changed drastically, but the median just changed a little bit. And that leads us to a definition. A statistic is resistant if its value is not affected much by extreme values. 
meaning data points that are much larger or much smaller than the other values in the data set. As we saw in the previous example, the median is resistant. It is a statistic that is resistant to extreme values. However, the mean is not resistant and will change drastically when there are extreme values present. In summary, why do we need more than one measure of center? Well, part of that is because the mean is the measure of center that is the most susceptible to these extreme values. And that means if we have a skewed distribution, the mean will be pulled away from the center and toward the tail. So for a positively skewed distribution, a distribution with the tail on the right, the mean will be pulled toward the right and will be larger than the median. For a negatively skewed distribution, the mean will be pulled toward the tail on the left and the mean will be smaller than the median.